Right, greetings all. Hope this finds you well as always. It's now time for the latest update from the machine shop, where we're up to and what we're on with. Right, there's not a vast amount to uh, report on this week, mainly because as you saw last week, we're getting to the end of the winter work, stuff's back together, and engines are now starting to go chuff again, as they should do. We've had um, 76079 out running today. We've had Eric and 136 out earlier in the week. I believe the plan's to have the 9F out tomorrow, but don't quote me on that one. So, yeah, it's all coming together, and so this is what we're up to. Well, one of the jobs I've been catching up with, to be honest, is a bit of a gentle tidy up, um, and a reorganise, and a sort, and a restock, and sharpen all the drill bits, and exciting things like that. But one thing I am on with is, in the absence of Brian, because unfortunately he's on holiday in Singapore for a couple of weeks, we've had a request for a couple of spare gauge frame fittings. Yet again, these are a couple of spares for Eric. We basically just want a couple of spares in stock, so that if we have issues with anything, we've got them. And so I've started off doing these today. There's the sample. That's what we want, minus the swarf that's stuck to it. That's what we want it to look like. And then those are the two blanks. So as you can see, they've they've gained the hexagon head, there's a shoulder, there's a threaded portion there, and I'll do the bore in the bottom. That bore in the bottom, incidentally, is to clear the top restrictor in the gauge frame. The idea of a restrictor is if the gla gauge glass itself shatters, then that restrictor drops into the hole, into the hole and blocks the worst of the steam and water flow that's coming out through the shattered glass. So that's that hole I'll do last of all. And as I said before, these are so I want a spontaneous gravity test. These are recycling. What they're actually made from is scrap washout plugs like this one here. Now this is actually number three washout plug. These two, sorry, these one, now the other one's lying in the crap tray somewhere. These are actually made from a number two washout plug, which is slightly smaller than this, surprisingly. Um, and these have been, they've, they've, they've been taken out of the boiler at washout, and they've been found to, this one's got a defect in the thread, you can't feel it. I'm just going to see if you can see it. Yeah, the thread, if you look closely, you'll see the thread is distorted. You can just see just above my thumb how those two threads there are distorted that plug's been condemned as a result but it's still good material it's lg4 bronze or at least it should well no it's lg4 bronze we even have a material certificate for it we can trace them back to individual batches so it's no good material and well instead of scrapping them let's make something useful out of them so there's another hopefully these are the last two fittings we've got to do over this winter we seem to have a bit of run of on them i'm not quite sure why whether it's um just the way the world's worked or what, or they're just all worn out simultaneously, I don't know. But anyway, so that's the little job I've been on with today. Um, last week, week, I pointed a camera at a valve head and started to talk about the slaughter. And th this week, while I wasn't here, Barry's got that job finished. And so there we are. One very nicely machined valve head, ready to go complete with a little keyway now i will add probably in the comments to this because um i don't think my video editing's that good i will add a short clip adrian dennis has sent me which is he took it during the week while i wasn't here of the shaper actually operating so people can yeah put some actions to my um nebulous words last week so but there you go that's that's done and ready to go as you can see it's got the grooves of the rings in there the various hieroglyphics on it indicate which way round it goes i believe a point is towards the front so you because that you want it to be a certain it'll be a certain way around to fit and so yeah as we've seen we've got the keyway there done as well with the slotter so that's as I said last week, it isn't used every time, but when it is, it's the only machine you've got that'll do the job. So, very useful piece of kit indeed. And as I said, I'll add Adrian's video he sent me of it actually operating. Right, now, the next thing we'll talk about is a job that's coming up. Um, but to do this, I'm first going to show you the drawing I've got, and then we'll have to go into the boiler shop so I can explain what the job's actually about. Now, the job is for some bits for Heartland. What they are is effectively temporary boiler stays. Here's the drawing Will Parrish has given me. Uh, bracing stays, he's called them. What we're basically looking at is basically length threaded bar. 11 TPI, because that's the standard for 
boiler threads, so they're eight and a half inches long or six and a half inches long. And material can just be any mild steel because they're not actually gonna have to do anything apart from just hold two pieces of steel plate together. And we'll go and see what we're doing and why, which is in the boiler shop down here. So I'll just carry on down the shop. Nothing really exciting to show off in here, I'm afraid. Um, but anyway, come through here. Um, and then throw into the boiler shop here. That's the mats and jacks and the plans cabinet and um, 7502.9's axle boxes. <laughs> there you go. Um, oh, let's just carry on walking down here. And my bleeding sack truck, which somebody's helped themselves to, that's coming back with us. Um, right. Here we are, Hartland's boiler. And as you can see, it's upside down. Now, what we're looking at is looking at the firebox. There's a foundation ring at the top. We can see the outer firebox shell there. In a firebox here, we can see the water space coming up between the two of them. Now, Hartland's firebox is entirely welded. If we look up at the top, we'll just be able to see a weld seam there between the foundation ring and the outer shell plating the firebox. Now, the problem is, when you weld things, especially steel, it has a nasty habit of distorting. You put heat into it, and it doesn't matter how thick it is, you can bet good money it will move. Now, what you have to understand about boiler stays is, on the outside, there's a hole here, and there's also a corresponding hole on the inside. Now those holes will be tapped with what they call continuous interrupted thread. That is, this hole will be tapped, 11 TPI surprisingly. That hole will be tapped, also 11 TPI. And the thread will be continued as if that was one solid piece of metal all the way. That thread will be continuous between those two holes, despite the fact it's crossed the water space, okay? Now, that has to be tapped before we weld the back head on. And the danger is that in welding the back head, these plates will distort. That is inevitable. And so what we want to do is we want to brace them with these temporary stays. Now, you can see that, can't you? That's a temporary stay. Why can't we just use that? Well, come on. Right, well, when we put the back head in, we will not be able to gain access easily to this water space. And you'll see that this piece of studding here has a nut on there and a nut on there. And so once the back head's welded on, those two nuts there, they're completely inaccessible. Won't be able to get in to undo them unless you can find somebody who can fit up that space. And I don't think anyone that slim exists on our staff. So the idea is these temporary bracing stays. We're not, the, I mean, the, the eventual final stay will actually be made a model. Um, I discovered this afternoon in a conversation with Nick Simpson that the stays either side of the welds will actually be model, not steel. The rest will be steel, but those ones will be model. And the danger is that if that goes wrong, if it moves, it damages the stay, well, that's quite an expensive thing. But if it just damages a piece of mild steel bar, that's peanuts to replace. And if, necess if we discover, oh, it has moved, it has damaged one of the threads, we can then very simply just re-tap them. But well, to do re-tap them, we'll have to go up a size. Not a problem, because we can then order the stay for that finished size. However, if the first thing we've got to do is remove a model stay, and then re-tap it, and then put in a bigger model stay, well, that's a lot of expense, which we really don't need at the moment. So, some a little job will actually be quite different, um, quite interesting, and should be quite challenging to do actually because cutting a continuous thread that length and not replicating the errors or any taper is going to be well be a fun little challenge for one of my lads so anyway so that's um the next little thing we're going to do we'll just have a quick look at tartan's boiler while we had it um anyone who gets excited about welding porn please try to contain yourself the welds that um it's been done by north bay engineering service and the welding is lovely it really is nice i'm no welder but it really is nice what they're doing uh the back end to it's actually currently sat on the floor here it's got all the weld preps ground on, as you can see. These plates here are just temporarily tagged on there. They're just to give us some lifting eyes, just to be able to lift it and get it aligned. The last piece of the jigsaw will be in between the inner and outer plates. There's a forged fire hole door ring to go in, 
which basically we're going to have to put off of the two up and then fettle it to get it absolutely perfect fet. So there you go. So anyway, something a bit interesting, folks, something a bit different and gives you some idea of um, what we're doing and some of the jobs we can be asked to do. And these will not be in the locomotive when they're finished. They're just purely temporary tooling to get the job done. But we've been called upon to make them, so make them we will. Anyway, folks, hope you found it interesting and educational informative. I certainly did, because I didn't know half of what was involved in um, doing this job with the boiler. So it's been a very educational afternoon, actually. So anyway, folks, hope you found it interesting and informative as always. Now take care, and I'll see you around.